So binaural audio, it gives us an immersive effect on headphones, but it only works on headphones, right? If you need a refresher, you can watch my video on spatial audio, but the short version is that binaural only works on headphones because it relies on delivering a totally different signal to each ear. If you're listening on speakers, that doesn't happen. The sound from the right speaker still reaches our left ear and vice versa. This is known as crosstalk. That crosstalk destroys binaural effects, and it's the reason why it doesn't work on speakers. That is, unless there's a way to cancel out the crosstalk. That idea isn't new. There was hardware to do this all the way back in the 1970s. At its core, the idea is really simple. The sound from the left speaker will reach the right ear with a slight delay, and so the right loudspeaker can send out an opposing signal to cancel this out. The problem is that the cancellation signal also reaches the left ear, but then you just have to cancel the cancellation signal, then cancel the cancellation cancellation signal, then cancel the cancellation cancellation can Well, you get the idea. By creating a series of cascading cancellation filters, you can eventually get the crosstalk below the audible level. There's even some benefits over headphone playback when doing this. There's a problem called the inside the head effect, where the sound is perceived as coming from, well, inside your head rather than actually around you when listening on headphones. Since the speakers aren't strapped to your head, they actually interact with the room acoustics around you to provide a much more convincing externalization, making it feel like the sound is actually in the room with you. One of the first pieces of consumer hardware to do the crosstalk cancellation was the Roland RSS-10, and it actually worked quite well. I'll link a short video demo that lets you hear the effect on properly configured stereo speakers. Unfortunately, the RSS-10 is long discontinued, so it's difficult to find and requires hacking together a solution to control it. There's been a few other solutions released in the past few decades, ranging from mobile apps to hardware converters, but none seem to have really taken off, and it's hard to find information through anything other than the Wayback Machine. If you want to try it yourself, there is a VST plugin called Ambio.1. It's based on an algorithm known as RACE, or Recursive Ambiophonic Crosstalk Illumination. Ambiophonics is a term that has historically been used to describe crosstalk cancellation, but as far as I can tell, it has fallen out of favor. Like other modern implementations, a lot of the original information about this plugin and the algorithm are lost to time. You can still find the download for the VST on Softpedia, but use it at your own risk. Ubok is another plugin which does the same thing as Ambio.1, but with a different algorithm and a much more intuitive interface. Unfortunately, that is also reflected in the price. There is a two-week trial if you'd like to demo it for yourself. To be honest, I was really unimpressed with these software solutions, so I'm not going to demo them here, but they can both be downloaded for free, so I won't stop you from trying them yourself. Unfortunately, all of the previously mentioned solutions have a big problem that can't be solved. No matter how good the implementation is, it falls apart the moment you move your head. That's because the cancellation relies on very specific delays based on the position of your head relative to the speakers. What if there was a way to compensate for this? That's where Audio Scenic comes in. They're a company combining crosstalk cancellation with machine vision to track your head and adapt the cancellation in real time. So even if you move your head, you still get the full effect. There's a few commercial products available today with this technology, but one we're looking at is the Razer Leviathan V2 Pro. It features five drivers arranged in an array, and the additional drivers help improve the quality of the crosstalk cancellation. It also features a camera, which is being used to do head tracking. There are a number of modes you can utilize through the Razer Synapse software or by changing the mode on the device. There's a traditional stereo mode as well as a room fill mode that uses the array to direct the sound more widely in a space. We're concerned with the virtual headset mode, which will allow us to play binaural content with crosstalk cancellation. There's also a virtual surround mode, which can binauralize surround sound content uh, if you set windows to a 5.1 or 7.1 output. For this demo, I've taped two microphones to my ears so you can hopefully hear how it sounds by listening on a pair of headphones. I realize the irony of having you put on headphones to listen to the effect of speakers emulating headphones, but I'll be honest, I don't have a better idea of how to do it for you.
The Leviathan works really well in my opinion. The effect is very convincing. I do have two main issues with it. The first is that the high frequencies don't always spatialize quite properly. This shouldn't surprise you if you've watched my video on wave field synthesis. High frequencies are harder to direct since you need more speakers placed closer together, which also requires them to be smaller. This is most noticeable with things like cymbals. The spatialization seems to split, where it's half coming from where it's intended to be, but the other half is coming directly from the sound bar. The head tracking is also definitely not instantaneous. If I move my head quickly, I can hear the cancellation catching up to my head movement. Besides those issues, I also want to point out that the Leviathan only works for a single user at a time, and obviously that user must be within the soundbar's tracking region. That includes not turning your head too far to one side, as that will cause one ear to be acoustically shattered by your head, ruining the effect. Overall, though, it's an exciting way to get a crosstalk cancellation system into your own home to listen to. Surprisingly, the Leviathan isn't the only place you can find a crosstalk cancellation system in a consumer environment. In fact, you might even have a device capable of it in your pocket right now. While I was working on this video, I was surprised to hear a convincing surround effect while watching a film on my iPhone. The sound appeared to jump outside of the phone beyond where the speakers should be able to spatialize it. There's not much information available online, but I found one forum post that suggests this is the case for any iPhone since at least the 11 Pro. I originally heard it on the 12 mini, but I've got a 15 plus here to demo the effect. When playing surround sound content with the phone held in landscape mode, you get one of the most convincing crosstalk cancellation experiences I've heard. It is phone speaker quality, but let me play it for you and you can judge for yourself. Overall, the effect is really convincing. It does appear to be doing head tracking, as I can hear a difference when I move my head um, if I cover the camera with my thumb. The head tracking is very fast, though. I don't hear the catching up effect that I do on the Razer Leviathan. I'm surprised that Apple hasn't published more information about their use of this technique, but I suppose it's been categorized under the spatial audio they've been advertising for quite some time now. I'd love to hear if any Android users are able to get a similar effect with their devices, especially if they advertise Dolby Atmos compatibility. Overall, crosstalk cancellation is really interesting. It definitely offers a future for more convincing surround and immersive effects in environments with fewer speakers. Right now, the big hurdles are improving the quality of the cancellation and real-time head tracking. And of course, for home theater environments, there's also a need to support multiple listeners. Lastly, binauralization as a whole still has plenty of room for improvement, whether it's being listened to on a crosstalk cancellation system or just regular headphones. There has been an immense amount of progress over the past five years, and the increasing interest among companies like Apple and Google has really started to bring big improvements. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you learned something new, definitely hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, definitely hit that subscribe button.